sheets. Guess you'll be mixed up in it. In what? I ain't doing no harm. No harm. You couldn't yeah, do anything else me. but harm. You couldn't. Hey, you. Where are you going? Where are you? Come on, get in. Where do you think you're off to, eh? Thank you. Come on. What's your hey, name? Hey, um, sir. Come on. Michael Starkey, sir. All right, please, sir. Michael Starkey, sir. What do you think you're doing? Nothing, sir. Honestly. How about you, Spider? Where's all your friends of your own age tonight, then? Told not to knock about me, own mates, one eye. Glad to see you taking notice. Come on, then. Who was it? What are you on about? What are we supposed to have done now? Send that thin fly down a hill on fire. Scratched a gentleman's car. And nearly knocked down an old lady. What? Well, come on. Who was it? You. You, you stupid. Get that old box thing on wheels. What are you talking about? I only gave it a kick down the hill. Right, then. We'll start with all your names and addresses first, shall we? <laughs> you first. Right, name. Marvin Hurst. Marvin what? Marvin Hurst. Like this car got scratched still down there, is he, eh? Hey, and how about the old lady? Sent her off to hospital and ambulance, have you? There's one name and address we sharp What's need that? to ask, isn't there? <coughs> I got a 20. Where did you get these? Oh, he's given me by, by a man, a fella. Fella? What fella? What was his name? Santa Claus? You pinched these, didn't you? No, he did. He gave me. He did. All right, then. What was his name? Stanley. Stanley what? I don't know. It's half a name, just so. Stanley Wood. Was that his name, son? He might be. I don't know. But he, he didn't he give me. You ask him. Honest. I didn't pinch you. He didn't give me. He did. Anyway, you were there too. You saw him. Earlier on this evening, was this? All round at his place? Yes, we were all there. They must have seen it. Him, 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 give me, did you? Looks like you come over here. It's Michael, isn't it? Oh, it's nice to be scared. Oh, I'm not going to eat you. I just want us to have a nice little chat, that's all. When we finished, well, you can go straight home. If you chaps are in bed by the time, darling, will you please do something? Come on, Robert. Come on. Oh, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. Hold on, would you? There's a goal. Beauty coming up. Peter. Hmm? Peter, please. Oh, good. I'm going to miss the best goal of the match. Right. Oh, ah, no. oh, 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 you sit and have your coffee, dear. You're looking tired. I'll read to them. Come on. Are you me, please, please. Robert, don't be rude, please. I used you to read your mummy a story every night when she was a little girl. I know you told us. Weather forecast might be okay for golf after all. Darling, I wonder. Yeah, I'll, I'll drop your mother at the station on the way. Yeah, I was wondering if I could have a car tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you sure? Yes, yeah, you can drop me at the club and then uh, no, what take I your mother. Was, could you stop and look after children? Darling, I've just told. I'm sorry. Oh, why particularly tomorrow morning? He didn't phone at eight o'clock. Uh, sorry, love. Who did? Stanley Wood. Oh, oh, well. Uh, well, he'll, he'll probably phone first thing in the morning, or, or you could ring him. He hasn't got a phone. Mm. But do you realise this is the first Saturday night in seven months? Well, he he's hasn't probably gone out for a drink, or he's met a friend or something. Oh, that's not like... Oh, darling, stop worrying. I mean, 
Look, he's done very well indeed so far. I, I didn't think he'd stay out for a fortnight after that night he turned up here drunk with nowhere to live. <laughs> that wasn't Stanley, that was Billy Green. Oh, um... Stanley. Which one's he, then? Have you uh, told me a lot about him? No. As a matter of fact, I haven't told you anything about him at all. You've been one of our associates now for how long, Mrs Mitchell? Four years, is it? Just about, yes. How many men have you got on your hands at the moment? Two. Uh, one of them has been working in the same place for six months, and the other one, Billy Green, changes his job about once a fortnight, but at least so far he's still out. <laughs> Fine. Look, have you possibly got time to take on another? He won't be released for five or six months yet, so you'll have quite a bit of time to get to know him. Tell me something about him. Age 59, single, seven previous convictions, now serving four and a half years. Jobs went out. Clerk, baker's roundsman, milkman, shop assistant, van driver. No relatives, no letters, no contacts, no visits. Would you like to see him? What now? I mean, uh, have you talked to him about the idea of having Go and look out of that window over there. Exercise period. If you look over the far side of the yard, see a man standing on his own. He's brought out after the others for his own protection and taken back to the cells after the others have gone in. Do you see him? Yes. Sometimes I think all he's doing is waiting to die. What's his name? Stanley Wood. What's he in for? The one crime you don't talk about, not even to other prisoners. You're scared that they'll ever find out. For good reason, often enough. A prisoner within a prison. He's in for indecent assault on small boys. take to the idea of an associate? He might. A lot would depend on whether he took to the individual. Is there anything more you can tell me about him? Not a lot. First conviction not until he was 30. Six months. Then 12 months. 18 months. Two years. Two years. Eight years. Four and a half years. Nineteen and a half years out of the last thirty. Health good, intelligence within the normal IQ range. Last employer gave him a testimonial. Honest, hard-working, reliable. He drinks about once a week at weekends, he says, when he's out. That seems to be the dangerous time. Permanent address, offences always take place there. Pleads guilty every time. Six boys involved on this sentence, eight charges the time before, and so it's gone on the same pattern, about a year between offences. Is he having treatment? No. He says he doesn't feel the need to do it anymore. He knows he'll be all right this time when he goes out. He doesn't want to talk about it. So ashamed, he doesn't even want to think about it. And what are his chances, really? Seven previous convictions, well known in the locality where he lives, a sitting target any time for boys who are not too particular about what they do to get a few shillings. What would you think? Well, what gives you the idea I might have more success than you? You could spend more time on him, for one thing. If he doesn't ever find anyone he can talk to, then he's no hope at all. I expect to begin with, he'll think you're a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> How many children have you, by the way? Two boys. One seven, one nine. His offences are always with the pre-pubertal age group, 7 to 12 or 13. As a matter of interest, what exactly is indecent assault? Do you want to tell me? These children can get from the public libraries these days. I shouldn't think they'll be able to sleep after that. Anything wrong? Oh, you know, Shelley, worrying about one of her prisoners again.
Wood. Go on then, Wood. Get up. Come on, get up! Come on, get your shoes on. We're taking you down to the station for questioning. Come on, you bastard. We haven't got all night. I'm sorry, no. I could take a sleeping pill. I have done. Uh, you're not still worried about... Uh... If, it, if it doesn't call first thing in the morning... You take the car and I'll scrub it off. But you know, try to get some sleep. No, please. Oh. Robert, no! Put ball in the hall, please. Now look, look, why don't you take the Sunday papers up to Daddy? That'll be good, both of you. I'll be back about lunchtime. Hey, I was reading that. Visitors for Johnson, Raymond, Ingall, O'Rourke, Wood, Stansted, Green. Oh, no, really, I... It's very good of you to come, Mrs. Mitchell. My name's Shelley. Mrs. Shelley. And, uh, <laughs> no, I meant Shelley Mitchell. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to be. You must think I'm terribly stupid. Uh, no, no, really, no, no, don't worry. It is a bit of an odd name, isn't it? My father was a great poetry reader. Being in prison makes you a bit slow. So that's all right. Now, the main thing is um, <clears throat> that you know who I am and what I am. That I'm a voluntary associate. Oh, yes. And you know what an associate is? No. Well, it's um, a bit like the old idea of, of prison visitors, only more for when you come out. I can come and see you inside too, of course, but, but we keep in touch afterwards. Do I have to sort of report to you? No, no, nothing like that. No, you don't have to have anything more to do with me when you come out if you don't want to. I'm simply here to, to try and help with um, somewhere to live, a job, things like that. Well, I've got somewhere to live. We've... I've got my own house. Well, it was my mother's. She left it to me when she died. Well, that's fine, then. And a job? How about that? The last firm I worked for, they did say... It's been a long time now. And friends, do you have... Do you have many friends? You spend most of your time in these places. You don't... Before, I didn't need friends, really. I, my mother was my best friend. I didn't want anyone else. Well, perhaps we could get to know one another a bit before you come out. I'll write to you from time to time and come and see you. I'll even take you out on a day's parole, if you'd like to come. A oh, day's parole? Would they let you do that? I mean, I wouldn't try to run away or cause any trouble. Do you really think they might? I can only ask. What a marvellous thing of you to do for me. 
really is a surprise. Are you? Do you have a job of some kind? No, no, I'm just a housewife. And that's all. <laughs> it's enough with a family, believe me. What did you think I did? Oh, nothing. Well, I've just wondered, that's all. I, I was a, a teacher before I got You don't back. play the piano, do you? No. Do you? Oh, no. Days for old. That would be wonderful. Only if it's no bother. I mean, if it's going to be difficult to arrange. Well, you leave it to me. I'll see what I can do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Sorry, madam. Mrs. Mitchell, did you say? And the name of the prisoner was... Uh... Wood. Stanley Wood. Oh, yes. He's all ready for you. Parole visitor here for Wood. Right. Wood. 189182, sir. Nice to see you. What time are you due back, Wood? 5.30, sir. Do you understand the conditions of your parole? Yes, sir. All right. Don't be late. So rude, aren't I? I'm terribly sorry, I... It's all right. It's just that it's all so... After two years, you forget what it's like. Yes, I'm sure you do. I thought we'd go somewhere quiet. It's a nice day. How about the park, hmm? Oh, wonderful. Oh, the park would be really nice. So good of you, Mrs. Mitchell, to do all this. One small thing, just to please me. Don't keep telling me how good it is of me. Oh, yeah. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to annoy you or anything. It's just that I'm not used to Let's see... just take it as said, yes? Perfect. It's perfect. I never imagined such a day could happen. I prayed last night. I said a prayer that it would all be all right, that everything would work out. Prayers do get answered sometimes, don't they? But I thought you might like some tea before we went back. Uh, I've had a few funds. So all right? Oh, sure. I mean, you've given me such a lovely day already. Now, what about your promise? <laughs> I couldn't really. But they were delicious. Almost exactly the same as my mother used to make. <laughs> I've got some photographs of her when she was young. Are you sure you don't play the piano? I'm quite sure. She did. She was a lovely pianist. She used to play and sing for hours. Lovely person. I suppose most people would think it strange, wouldn't they? A man feeling like this about his mother. How long ago did she die? Nine... No, nearly ten years. Still seems only like yesterday. They say you get over things in time, but there's no one can ever replace your mother, is there? 
Saturday's the worst night. It's a really lonely one. We always used to go to the pictures on a Saturday. We never missed. I can still... Hello, darling. Hello. Hello. Mark, this is Mr Wood. Mr Wood, this is Mark. How do you do, Mr Wood? Hello, Mark. Robert! What on earth have you been doing? I was the goalie. We only lost six for honest. I made some soup saves. Did you really? Well, you go and get those filthy things up at once. Can I have one of those No, you first? can't. You go and get washed. Go on. Take them up, all of them, by the door. Can you play football, Mr. Wood? Oh, no, I'm afraid I'm a bit old for football now. I can do card tricks, then. Shall I show you one? Oh, please. Have you got any cards? I'll go and get there for you. Robert, I said take those things off. Right. Let's see. I know. I'm going to lay out some cards like this. And you've got to choose one, but don't tell me which one it is. Okay. Just remember it. Have you chosen it? Yeah. Which line is it in? Middle. Middle line. Right. A long time since I've done this trick, so it's very important that you don't forget it. If you forget it, the trick doesn't work. If you remember, oh, I'm doing a card trick for Mark. Oh, there we are. Now, which line is it in this time? Middle. Still in the middle. It's supposed to move. That's gone wrong. Do you like card tricks? Yeah. So, uh, here we go. Three. This is the last time I lay them out, so watch it very carefully. Now. Which line's it in now? Middle! <laughs> that doesn't matter. That gets very difficult now. Is that the card you chose? Blimey, how to do that? Need it for me now! Oh, all right, I'll do it for you now. Robert, I said chain. But I wanted to see this Go and get dressed. Children. <laughs> no more card tricks now. Do as your mum says, there's a good boy. I'll show you some more after your tea. Promise? Well, we're in good time. It's only quarter past five. Let's have a cigarette before you have to go. I never thought there could be such a day. You've been so good to me. To take me out, to take me to your home. Introduce me to your boys. A, a person like me, I mean. You know, don't you? I didn't know if you did it first. Then, when you looked at me, when... Your boys, you see, I want you to know I'd never, I'd never dream of. Perhaps you won't believe this, but it's true. I love children. Sometimes I think if only I'd married and had children of my own. I just can't understand what it is that comes over me. I don't think what I'm doing and then Afterwards, I feel so ashamed. Mrs. Mitchell, do you think for someone like me, is it too late? Or do you think there could be some kind of treatment? Could I be treated? Do you think I could? 
Yes, Stanley. Yes, you could. You, Stanley? No. No, he's not here. Do you know by any chance when he'll be back? Uh, no idea. Well, do you know where he might be? No, oh, I'm waiting for him myself, see. Well, when he does come back, would you tell him that Mrs. Mitchell called? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Excuse me, missus. I uh, climbed in through the window, see? Because that's what he told me to do. He said, you know, like, any time you weren't in, just hop in through the window, sit down and wait, like. I was, uh, like, going to leave a note for him, but there's not much point, really. I won't bother. Are you a friend of his? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, kind of yes and no, if you know what I mean. More like... Well, sort of. Have you seen him in the last few days? No. No, I haven't. He ain't been around for a bit. As a matter of fact, I was thinking. It's just about time I ought to be going when you come along. Oh, well. So long, then. Sorry I can't help.
you're doing? Who are you? We're police officers, madam. Police? I... With a search warrant. Where's Mr. Wood? What happened? What right have you to carry on You that? don't live here, madam. Are you a relative? No. I... Look what is going on. I can't give you any information. I'm sorry. You say you're the police. Anybody could say that. Anybody could say that they were the police. Now, we're very busy, madam, so perhaps if you wouldn't mind... Well, what's happened to him? I couldn't tell you, madam. No doubt he'll communicate with you himself in time, if he wishes to. Well, at least tell me where he is. That's not possible at all. All I can tell you is he's being held in custody, that's all. In custody? Where? On what charge? Now, look, I've been very patient with you, madam. He's appearing in court tomorrow morning before the local magistrate. Now, if you wouldn't mind, we're very busy, so I'll bid you good day. Ten o'clock, the court opens, madam. The one just passed the new comprehensive. Oh, darling, where the hell have you been? I'm terribly sorry, darling. I had no idea at the time. You know, you are three hours late, I'm sorry. darling. The kids have driven me mad. I mean, Peter was livid I had to cancel the golf. Y your mother had to get a taxi to catch a train. John I... Stanley's in trouble. Stanley. The police are at his house. Oh, look, it's a... darling, just... I am getting fed up to the back teeth with the way, way you keep putting Stanley in and all your other prisoners first all the time. I... Oh. Darling, please, try and understand. Try. Me. I have done nothing else but try for the last four years, but it, it's getting worse and worse. The, the boys were worried sick, and I'm so sorry. was I. Dinner, it's burnt to a cinder. A bloody man I've never even heard of, and he's ruined the entire weekend for the, for the whole family. I'm, I'm going to the club for a, for a beer and a sandwich. And maybe a quick nine holes if the light lasts longer. What have you been, Mummy? Where's Daddy going now? I'm awfully sorry, darling. It's just something that took a bit longer than I expected. I'm ever so hungry. What's the matter, Mummy? You're not crying, are you? No. No. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's make it up. It's made up. Please. I've got a hell of a lot to do tomorrow. Casey number four, Stanley Wood. Can you tell me, has it been heard yet? Oh, you missed him, I'm afraid. He was on about half an hour ago. Oh, thank you. Uh, are you a relative of his? No, just a friend. Oh. Well, the police just asked for remand in custody, that's all. It was over in a couple of minutes. Uh, have you known him for long? Uh, about a year or so. Oh, so you met him while he was still in prison? Yes. I'm a voluntary associate. Ah. Uh, you got a few moments for a chat? I'm a probation officer, by the way. My name is Philip Bream, and you are... Shelley Mitchell. How do you do? Do come in. Want to sit down? Thank you. 
Is, uh, is Stanley with you first, prisoner? No, not by any means. Some probation officers aren't very keen on voluntary associates. Yes, I know. Still, if aftercare's ever going to be anything better than the shambles it is, there's going to be plenty of room for both amateurs and professionals. Stanley Wood. He's a, he's a bit of a problem, isn't he? Oh, you know him, then? Oh, when he came up from the sentence before his last one, I had him on licence. I never got anywhere. I don't seem to have either. What has he been charged with? There's only one charge so far, the usual thing. You know, purely a holding one. And the police will use the time that he's in custody to make further inquiries. I suppose by the time they've finished, they'll end up with six or seven charges. Well, they usually make out a separate charge for each child. And then? Well, then the magistrates will send him on up to assizes in view of his previous record so he can get another good long stretch of imprisonment. And he was trying so hard. If only he'd make some attempt to get treatment, to try and get out of this perpetual but he round. he did. He did? Yes. Oh, I hadn't heard about this. But what happened? Well, he asked me. He asked me if I thought it was too late, and I said, no, of course not. But wanting treatment and getting it aren't quite the same thing, are they? The governor, Mr. Lincoln, he's a nice man, you know. Sort of person you could really talk to, if you've ever got the proper chance. But there's so many, isn't there? So many prisoners, I mean. It's all the staff can do to remember people's names most of the time. It was a good idea to come here. I live by the river, you know. It's good of them at the prison to let me out a few times like this with you. They're not all bad people in them places. I'm not a great one for mixing with other people, I'm afraid. More of a solitary man. A bit like my father, I suppose. He was a sailor, you know. Often we didn't see him. Almost from one year's end to the next. My mother was very unhappy with him. She never said much, but I knew she was. Whenever he was home, there was always terrible rows. Terrible rows. I was only a kid, but if ever I saw her crying, I'd go for him. I'd pummel him with my fists. Eight or nine, that's all I'd be, but I really would go for him, I would. I couldn't ever bear to see her cry. Then one day, finally, he just didn't come home anymore. Did she ever think of marrying again? Oh, no. She didn't believe in that sort of thing. She used to say she didn't need anyone else, so long as she got me. Devoted she was. Devoted herself to me. She was... Well, she was like a wife to me, really. You understand? Better than a wife, in fact. Because I'd known her all my life, hadn't I? You can't get any closer, can you, to anyone than that. Real pals we were. Always, you know. Even when I started getting into trouble, she always forgave me. She'd say she was sure I'd just forgotten myself. If she was alive today, I know she'd help me. Tell me what to do. What to do? I'm, I'm sure you meant it for the best last time. You said it wasn't too late. But when I got back with you that day and asked the governor, he said it was. Did you say that? Yes, I did. But, but you were the one that told me that he wouldn't accept treatment. Now, when he comes around I know the it must sound strange to you, Mrs Mitchell, it but... It sounds monstrous. Yes, I agree, it must, but I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. What I meant, and what, quite honestly, I thought he'd understood was that it was too late for us to get anything started here, so near to the end of his sentence. There are nothing like the psychiatric services that are needed inside prison. It takes a long time to arrange. By the time we'd started, he'd be almost due to go out. Good God, you've had him in 
here for three years. Why on earth couldn't something have been begun ages ago? Mrs. Mitchell, I told you before, treatment can't be given to someone who refuses to accept he needs it. I've over a thousand men in this prison and heaven knows it's difficult enough to help those who want to be helped. Don't imagine we just like keeping people in full stop. It costs getting on for £20 a week to keep one man in prison. I could think of a dozen better ways in which we could spend the money. It must be cheaper in the long run to do things for people to help them, treat them, not just imprison them. But in Stanley Wood's case, all I could do as a last hope for him was put him in touch with you to see if you could get anywhere. All right, you did. But you do realise the day his sentence ends, he goes out. The only thing I can suggest is that perhaps you can persuade him to have treatment outside. I'm frightened. Three weeks. It's not long now, is it? You forget you're now in prison. You begin to feel that nothing more can happen to you. Nothing worse. And one day you're coming out. And you get afraid. It's a silly thing. I remember the last time I came out, they changed all the phone boxes. The bungalow will be in a mess. And I'll have to find work. Now you want me to do this as well. It won't be easy, I know. But going to an ordinary doctor, it's not like having treatment in prison, is it? Yes, he'll say. What's the matter with you? Well, how do you start telling him? And what's he going to think of me? I'm sure you won't be the first one he's ever come across. Perhaps he'll just regard it as an unfortunate illness. Do you think? I've just got this thing wrong with me. I suppose everybody's got something, haven't they? Some of them are even worse. And this is what I've got. This is my share. Wasn't too bad, Shelley. I did it. I got there. That's the worst over. And they do. They do say they think they can help me. Oh, thank you. Today they just took down details. I have to go back in three weeks' time when they'll make a start. And it didn't help? A quarter of an hour psychotherapy once a month. Staff problems. Had a different doctor nearly every time. You have to keep starting all over again at the, right at the beginning with a, a new doctor. Oh, I suppose if he'd been a private patient, it would have been different. Of course, he didn't complain. He just said, thank you very much. So, yes, I'll come back next month. And he was very understanding about how busy they were. And it went on like that? Until about six weeks ago. He said he wasn't very happy about it. He, he didn't think that it was doing much good. Local boys kept coming round, coming into his house. And why is it that to you that would be meaningless and to Stanley it's a temptation that eventually overwhelms him? And what is the difference in the way men... How much can we blame him? I don't know. I don't think people want to know on the whole. They'd sooner just punish. And if psychiatry can't come up with the answers, then they think psychiatry is a waste of time too. Can it really help? I mean, with someone like him, if it's done properly, can it really help? Oh, yes. Yes, I think it can. They haven't got all the answers, but they have got some. This sort of case, it's, it's comparatively simple. It usually means a, an emotional retardation. Someone who's never developed relationships beyond a childish level. Well, he was kept a child, you see, wasn't he, by his mother? Devoted to her, never allowed to grow away from her. So what happens? He's only ever rarely at ease with children. Well, he's one of them. And what he does with them and to them is exactly the same as children do to each other among themselves. Only because physically he's grown up, people are horrified. Do you think I ought to go to court and try and speak? Or someone ought. Look, the court granted him legal aid this morning. 
Should I find out the name of his solicitors for you? Yes. There is a defence, if they're interested enough to fight it. Yes. Give me their names. A legal aid case, I see. We've only had them a day or two. You will appreciate, Mrs. Mitchell, that uh, confidentiality doesn't allow me to discuss a client's affairs with a stranger. Well, I didn't want to discuss anything. I, I merely wanted to say one or two things that uh, I hoped you could use in his defence. Well, now, let's see what he's charged with. Ah, yes. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I can't prevent you telling me things, of course, if there was anything particular you wanted to say. Um, well, I, I believe it, it's not yet known how many charges eventually will be made. Uh, but something still can be said in his defence. Which we shall uh, certainly say. I'm what's known as a voluntary associate. I was introduced... The women's voluntary to... service, the WVS, is that? Uh, no, no. Have you, have you not come across an associate before? <laughs> we don't handle a great deal of criminal work of this type. I, I met this man in prison and I tried to help him when he came out. Admirable. I encouraged him to get psychiatric treatment. And in fact, he was still having this treatment when he was arrested. I think that should be said. Well, we'll consider it. <laughs> that sort of argument, you see, well, uh, it could boomerang, couldn't it? Uh, psychiatric treatment was having no effect. <laughs> you do follow. But he was getting nothing like sufficient. That is the whole point. Are you medically qualified yourself, Mrs. Mitchell? No, no, I'm not. I am Quite so. A... Well, rest assured, we'll do everything we can to see he gets the most lenient sentence possible. This is by no means his first offence, is it? No, but... What exactly would you hope to achieve for him? Well, depending on the number of charges, of course, but I should think, um, five years would be reasonable. Five years? Look, I... I suppose how many charges the police eventually bring is important, then. Well, of course. Well, is it necessary to make a separate charge for every boy who was present? Perhaps if you spoke to them? We're on very good terms. I've always found the police most helpful and very cooperative. I see. Well, thank you for your help. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Mitchell. My name is Mrs. Mitchell. I wonder, could I have a word with someone about a man called Stanley Wood, please? Certainly you could, madam. Now, Chief Inspector Sands has got somebody with him at the moment, but it'll not be long, if you'll be waiting. I just blew a pot of tea. Would you like a cup? Uh, no, no, thank you very much. Sit yourself down. There'll only be a few minutes. Thank you. Oh, thank you, madam. Now, don't worry. I assure you have been a great help. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye. Another lady to see you. So about Wood. Yes? Good, good. Mrs. Mitchell with... Yes? I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. This way, please. Thank you, Sergeant. Ah, very good of you to come, madam. Very good indeed. And uh, very sensible, if I may say so, coming on your own. Well, it's distressing, you know. Well, there's no need for it, really. I'm a very nice woman constable. Very nice indeed. Marvelous way with children. Takes the statement in your own home. It can cause a lot of harm to an impressionable child, you know. Build it up in his mind for the rest of his life, if it isn't handled discreetly. Yes, very sad business, most unpleasant. Won't keep you longer than we have to, though. Now, let me see. Mrs. Mitchell, you said. Mitchell, Mitchell. Uh, which one is your little chap, then? Stanley Wood. Stanley Wood. Stan... I beg your pardon? Stanley Wood. I'm his friend. Are you indeed? And you'll pardon me saying so, but I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. I was told that it depended on you how many charges were made. Not at all. It depends on the evidence, madam, and nothing else. But you decide whether to proceed or not. On the contrary. If an offence has been committed, we gather the facts and put them forward. That's all. But you could overlook something if you wanted to. Most curious idea of the police you have, madam. I come to ask you to give him a chance. A chance? That's a decision for the court. Madam, I don't doubt your intentions are of the very best. But believe me, I've known this man for many years. 
and he is a menace. But putting him back in prison over and over again is doing no good. At least it keeps him out of the way so that he can't indulge in his... You might think differently if you had children yourself. I have. I have two boys. And all I can say is it takes all kinds to make a world, doesn't it? Yes, it does. No one ever seems to think about the victims nowadays, do they? These unfortunate children, the distress it causes them, and their parents. Inspector, what well, The man I'm is a disgusting say... pervert. He's a human being. That is a matter of opinion. Now, if you'll excuse me, madam, I have a lot to do. The sergeant will see you out. I'm glad you came down to see me here. I wanted you to see where I lived. It is nice of you. Might not be very smart, but we liked it, you know, my mother and me. It's always pretty in the summer. And I had a boat. Not a big one. Nothing posh. A bit like that one, look, over there. Only not so big. I could never get her to go out in it, though. She didn't like the water. I can't talk to them. They're always so busy, you know. We never seem able to get started. Just like that one it was, only smaller. Needed a lot doing to it. The engine wasn't very good. Boys, they'd come and ask you. They could scrub the paintwork for you. Help you push it out into the water. That was it. How it began. Two little boys, one Saturday afternoon. Very hot. They helped me and then they said, would I take them out for a ride in it? We went out. Very hot day it was. They decided to jump over the side for a swim. They got no costumes on. When they got back into the boat, they were running about, fooling about. I told them to get dressed. But they didn't. And then, I must admit I did. I laid hand on them. Nothing serious, please don't think that. I didn't attack them or anything of that kind. Just playing about, touching them. That was as far as it went. They didn't seem to mind. It all seemed like just a harmless bit of fun at the time. Then we came back. They were jolly and laughing. They said they'd see me again next week. They must have told their parents, I suppose. Because they didn't come. The police did. They took me to court straight away for it. I was given six months. Thirty, I think I was then. Or thirty-one. To end up one day suddenly like that, bang, straight off in prison. You can't believe it can happen to you. My mother simply couldn't grasp it all. And I looked at it in the same way, too. There was no accounting for it. Something just happened. Come on me suddenly without any warning at all. I couldn't think what had possessed me. I couldn't even think about it. I was ashamed of myself. Really ashamed. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I shouldn't have told you that. I'm sorry, I... I got carried away. I'm glad you did. This is it. This is our house. It was one of my uncles originally. Mm -hmm. My mother bought it off him cheap for somewhere for us to live. Mm. It was much nicer and tidier though when she was alive. And she liked the garden. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. This is where she wanted to be brought back to and die when they brought her home from the hospital. They couldn't do anything for her. I think she knew herself it was cancer. After she'd gone alone, it was awful. I kept thinking she was coming back again, you know. I tried to forget about her, and I started to drink. I just sat here all alone missing her and drinking that cheap wine. All the kids knew. I was notorious in the district. Every time they wanted sixpence, they'd come along. Sometimes I'd find notes pushed under the door. I can't get away from that. I did. When I saw the notes, I did get a thrill from it, knowing they were coming to see me again. It couldn't be allowed to go on, could it? Once. The police came and actually found it going on. These boys running about half-dressed. Me sitting in the middle of it all, in my chair. Would you like a cup of tea? The judge was the same one as I'd had on the previous case. He remembered me, all right. He said, you're a menace, you are. I'm going to put a stop to your activities once and for all. So he gave me eight years preventative detention. <laughs> eight years. I really did. I thought I might as well be dead. I could never imagine myself coming out again. I just sat in my cell and thought, oh, what's the use? This is the finish. Oh. The only thing I felt was grateful that my mother hadn't lived to see where I'd ended up. That would have killed her, even if the illness hadn't. Other people, you can't expect them to understand, can you? When they say, I don't feel like that, so how can he? And they think it's disgusting. But it actually means raping a boy or trying to. An actual physical act of that sort. And that you're dirty and horrible. And cruel. Sometimes, you know, I think I perhaps got it from my father. He had a strong sexual side to his nature. And in his case, it consisted more of the attraction of women. Not like mine. It, well, it seems to be part of your nature somehow. A sort of illness, I suppose. And you don't know what to do. Yeah, it was so late. I... Do you mind having a drink? I'll start supper. Don't you worry about supper. We will both have a drink. I have got food in. Have you had a good day? <sighs> Not really. Oh. Darling, I'm, I'm sorry. I've been so... Uh... No, it's me. 
I'd been impossible. Not over nothing. I wouldn't mind if I'd achieved something, but I have got absolutely no way. You forget all about it, just for tonight. I'm sure you've done all you could. You always do. But it's so wrong. Oh, but you see, the world is full of wrong things. But there are some good things, too. I am to be made Northwest Area Sales Manager. Oh, John, really? A thousand a year oh, that's more. Marvelous. Help with buying a house, more expenses, <laughs> firms, car, Bu so I. Buying a house? Well, we're going to have to live there. Liverpool, Manchester. So it's a very nice place, if, you know, if you look around on the outskirts. So. Well, when would we have to move? Uh, three or four months. But they want me to go up there for a week as soon as possible to you know, meet the office people. Uh, you could come too. You see, we could leave the boys with your mother. Well, when? A uh, week after next. I mean, the sooner we start, look. Uh, something the matter? No, no, it's, oh, it's just everything is so confused. Stanley comes up for trial at the Assizes in a week or two, and I, I really think I ought to be there. Look, I know you think it's ridiculous, you put it but it's... out of your mind, just for the night. Where are the boys? Upstairs? In the bath, I hope. I'll tell them they can stay up till half past eight. I want a kiss, please. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> out of there, my man. I love children. Sometimes I think if only I'd married and had children of my own. I just can't understand what it is that comes over me. <laughs> I'm saying I can't hear you properly. I'm saying I can't hear you. No, we never can in these things. Very unsatisfactory, but there you are. What were you saying? I'm very grateful to you. Do the solicitors. The solicitors? Yes, if you could tell them I appreciate it. Stanley. I knew Mrs. Mitchell. You've been very good. Stanley, look. I don't know what I've done. Stanley, what I'm trying to say is that I want to make a fight of it. I want to make a fight of it for you. To, to try and get you out. Out. To go on. To start again. Well, that's the thing I'll get about five years. Wouldn't you? <laughs> There'll be a third off, of course, for good behaviour. What? So that'll make it three years or so. Well, then I'll only be... No, 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 I mean instead of. Instead of, not after. Do you see what I mean? Of course, that, that might help. What? I am guilty. Yes, Daddy, yes, I know you are. But I want you to fight. You mean try and make it four, huh? They might. They might if it was just... Look, Stanley, look, Stanley. Will you listen very carefully to what I'm saying to you? I don't think you ought to go back to prison at all. I want to try and get the court to adjourn the case so that... I'm sorry, it's very noisy. I, I want, want to do something about this. I stuff, want the you know? court. I want to try and get someone to say in court the things that ought to be said about you. And I don't accept there's no alternative but uh, prison. Mrs. Mitchell, please. I don't think I'm not grateful for all you've done, because I am. Honestly, I am. Yes, Stanley, but, but you mustn't look, wait. I know that. Stanley. Because I've let you down. Look, I know just that, listen and I feel to terrible me. about it. But that is I not important. I wouldn't blame important. you if you felt I wasn't worth bothering with. Look, Stanley. But no one's ever. And I'm grateful to you. Please, Stanley. don't ever doubt that. Stanley, do you want me to fight? Do you want me to fight? Yes, I yes, I do. It would be very good of you if you do. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't shave today. I didn't know you were coming, you see. I, I do hope you'll forgive our untidy Stanley, look. You seem very depressed, dear. I can't understand why you're not more excited about it all. Looking for a new house and this... Oh, I'll feel better about it when we get up there, I suppose. It's just I'm worried about the trial. Trial, dear? What trial? Well, just a man. You know, I've never been able to understand how you got so involved with prisoners, Shelley. I just can't make it out. 
There's so many other worthwhile things. Orphan children, famine relief. Suitable subjects for charity, you mean? Prisoners are human, you know, like anybody else. Good home, wonderful husband, nice children. What more do you want? Aren't you happy? Oh, yes, I am. I'm very happy. I'm very fortunate. And I'm very conscious of what other people haven't got. I'm very thankful. But that doesn't mean I don't care. But Shelley, we don't go around robbing people, hitting them on the head, shooting police. No, do most of the men in prison. In fact, what they do, the majority of them, it's unbelievable they should be there. So trivial, pathetic. Well, this man that you're so concerned with now, what does he do? Indecent assault on little boys. Shelley, I do wish you wouldn't say things just to try and shock me. I'm not. It's true. Indecent assault on little boys. And you're... It does happen, you know. You can't bury your head in the sand. Well, I'm a reasonably broad-minded person, but if there's one thing I can't stand, it's things like... Things like what? Hurting children. Perversion of the most horrible kind. I don't think it does hurt them. I'm not even sure it's worth calling a perversion. I don't wish to hear anything about it. <laughs> That's the trouble. People prefer to rely on their prejudices. Shall I tell you what he does? No. Well, I'm going to because I think you should know just what someone so far has spent nearly 20 years of his life in prison for. Indecent assault. The imagination runs riot, doesn't it? Now and again, he fondles small boys. Their legs, their bottoms... They're jelly. He is not a sex maniac. He doesn't try and rape them. He can't. He's impotent. And he doesn't use force against them either, because that would be buggery. He just touches them, that's all. And he doesn't go around looking for them either. They come to him. I don't believe it. Yes, they do. They don't mind, most of them. They know what he is and what he does. He's pathetic. Inadequate, impotent, homosexual. And when it's found out, everybody throws up their hands in horror. Not at the children, because they are dear, sweet, innocent little things. But at this monster in their midst. Whether what he does actually harms them or not is open to argument. Most little boys play about with themselves and with other little boys. I expect mine to do. And they don't all necessarily grow up into raging homosexuals. I won't listen to any more. This is all the most... All right, don't. Just disgusting. pretend it doesn't happen. Only when you calm down a bit, will you just think about it? Just think how a sad, wretched little man whose mother held him in an emotional vice so they could never have a grown-up relationship is doing a life sentence on installments. All because people like you won't think about what he does or how to help him. All you can think of is punishment. He hasn't even tried to get treatment this time. He failed. Or oh, we failed him, perhaps would be truer to say. The police think they're engaged in the fight against crime every time they catch him. And next week he comes up for sentence and the solicitor they've given him on legal aid will be satisfied if he gets him anything less than five years. I'm too old, Shelley. I'm sorry. But to my way of thinking, unfortunate though it all is, no doubt, we can well do without people like him. Yes, Spider, you've seen the papers. That old man Wood's been sent up to assizes. What's that mean? Oh, that's the big court, you know, and the judges, the top one and all that. Oh, man, should have been put inside good and proper. Serves him right. What'll he get then? Whatever it is. Bad your quid now, Spider, ain't you? Quid? What quid? Oh, Spider wrote him a letter, didn't you? Asked him for a quid. Said he could uh, introduce him to some kids. Oh, give over. Yes, you did. You told me. Saw it. I never sent that. I was having you on. I was only joking. I liked old Stanley, you know. He was a dirty old man. Peter's brother had one of these. 48 to the gallon. <laughs> Look, no, I'm not going to say any more. No. Which do you think? John. I suppose we really do need another cry, you think? Hmm? I mean, look, we managed all right need? so far. No, with one. I just... thought it would be more convenient, that's all. I mean, you know, get around more up there. 
What is the problem? I, I would be delighted at the thought of having your own car. Yes, I will. Of course, I will. You know that. Hmm. It's just... I was wondering if, if we could use the money for something else. Well, holiday or something? Uh, no, I wasn't thinking of anything quite like that. Um, look, a car costs, what, six, seven hundred pounds? Hmm. Two hundred pounds deposit. Well, you can afford it very easily now. Well, I have been making inquiries about something else, and I am told that it would cost about two hundred pounds. Okay, what? <clears throat> To have a man legally represented. To get him the best solicitor and barrister that I could. Privately, I mean. Not on the legal aid. No. <laughs> In all my life, Shelley, I, I've, I've never loved anyone as much as I love you. And look, I, I've never loved you as much as I love you now. But you can't, darling. We can't. No one could. There's a line, love. This is it. <laughs>